address are, are, are addresses that are assigned to particular uh, devices that you buy. If you buy a computer from the store, if you buy a tabulator hey, from your how do you do it? Uh, a f- iPhone, that? all of those have noise their don't own mind that. address. Just it's some random a whole bunch of numbers background. put together. If you're in Michigan, you may be interested. Actually, if you're anywhere in the country, you may be interested in this random static. But particularly if you're in Michigan, you may want a signature for that particular device. So when that device goes online, you know you can track it. You know where it is because everyone has their own address. So I got this Um, SSD. And so we've asked for those addresses because Um, we want to see. I'm going to fill it with a bunch of good stuff here. Uh, that we we, we believe we can identify foreign connections and to particular Mac or, SSD or IP addresses um, in particular counties across the state. I look here. And, uh, and you know, uh, interference from uh, foreign Spacing. interference, even domestic so, interference from DC. Be quiet and Certain people point. making attacks on counties on election day, hitting particular day. targets and firewalls. Um, and if we can identify yeah, what to get this done. the MAC address and IP address is for the devices used in Antrim County, we could verify that foreign interference hit those devices on election day. They don't want to give us those addresses. And were you able to verify this? Well, we don't we don't have their MAC addresses or IP addresses. But no, uh, what was so? There's something in there. I I haven't read the. The supplement yet but if you can't elaborate or or, or so let's say for instance that there was uh data oh, packets no, coming out of china or background. italy or germany but i or can't DC, really shut it off right now so. um coming into antrim county or any other county um those data packets come in and and this isn't unique to election day but these data packets come in from around the world all times of the year to everyone's computer, right? Uh, so if you have an unsecured network um, at your home, you have a router that is unsecure, anyone who knows your IP address or your MAC address can attack that modem and hack your uh, equipment, get into your network. Uh, some people try to prevent that by putting up firewalls or VPNs and things like that. Um, so we know that these things happen all the time. What we see is that on election day, the traffic uh, was exponentially higher than normal coming into these counties. Um, and we can see actual data packs hit counties from uh, foreign countries and D.C. Um, so. We want to know what computers they have. We don't know because we don't have the MAC addresses or the IP addresses of county-owned equipment. I wish so we ask them, give us your data. Bill of so we can then cross-reference that pop metal against information that people have regarding these packets coming you know, through the Internet. And what was their response to that? They refused to give it to us. They have said that if they give it to us, we would now have data or information regarding their secure network um, and be able to affect their election equipment. Now, get get a hold of that. Listen to that. They told us they're not connected to the Internet. (laughs) But if they give us the MAC addresses, we would then be able to affect their election. I mean, I guess if you go in there and actually, I, it is a literal and actual admission from them yep. that, that, uh, static. they hooked to the internet. Just static. Yeah. Yep. Nothing so now let me here. ask you this, and this is something here, here. that I alluded to earlier in the day. Is this just limited to dominoes? I have to say dominoes. I mean, no, is- no, it's, it's not limited to dominoes uh, because uh, what we see is that the algorithms controlled at the state level it doesn't matter what equipment you're using um, they're all designed because remember all these machines come from the same place 
ultimately. They all have their heritage uh, back to particular certain companies, right? There was a point where they were broken up and split off and formed three different companies. Um, but they all have at their heart the same guts. Uh, they change the way they look. They put a shiny interface on one. They dress up the girl a little prettier in another area. Uh, but they're all at, the, at their heart the same system. They all have the same vulnerabilities that we found. Uh, they have the same back doors that we found. They're designed intentionally to allow for this type of problem. There's no reason you couldn't create or design a system that is secure. I mean, look at your iPhone. You know how much more secure your iPhone is or any other phone, your Motorola, compared to a voting machine? I mean, it's, it's I mean, unbelievable how unsecure these machines are. So um, it, it looks like here that Dominion is the culprit in Barry, Charlevoix, Kent, but you also have Hart in two counties and ESNS in two counties as well. Um, now, there was an interesting tweet before we went on from Patrick Kolbeck. I'm not sure, Matt, if that's something you can discuss. If I, I'm, um, well, you tell me what the tweet was. I don't, I don't uh, know. A modem? Well, the modem that he's talking about is a modem that was found in an ESNS machine. Um, actually, a Taiwan based modem. Uh, we found it, it's there. It's on the motherboard. Uh, it exists, and it has. Uh, uh, we found connections uh, yeah, into that up. modem. It's from a, a, a different machine, but nevertheless, this theory that these machines in Michigan are not connected to the internet falls flat when we show you an actual modem sitting on a motherboard. Uh, it's unreal, unreal. I mean. <laughs> There's so much in this report, Matt, that I, I literally couldn't do. I, I mean, we could we could probably do like a five hour show on this. Um, one thing I did want to talk about is Cyber Ninjas uh, said that they discovered a Microsoft SQL server management studio implant on the system. That's a direct quote from him. Can you explain a little bit more what that is? Or are you, I, I'm not sure if that's if you're familiar with. Yeah, well, there's certain programs that are allowed on a, a voting system through the Election Commission, Federal Base Commission. They approve these uh, modules uh, that go into voting machines. Um, this one in particular is a Microsoft SQL uh, implant or module that's installed on the system that allows someone, if they wanted to, Nefarious people, for instance, with bad intentions, or maybe even people with good intentions, right? To go around the security protocols within the voting system through the Microsoft SQL module. That's what an implant does. And so think about this. If you know the MAC address or IP address of a tabulator or a election management system sitting in a county building. Let's put it that way. You know that that IP address. Um, you can then, uh, through the internet, get into that uh, system, right? You can breach the firewall. You can go directly to that uh, 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 computer, but you still have to uh, surf your way around within the machine. The SQL module, the implant, gives you direct access to the data. It's like Tron. Remember the movie Tron? Yep. Imagine that. little people running around in your EMS. You're just giving them a, a easier path, a, a quicker way to get there. They don't have to fight all the robots, right? You just let them in the door. And now through the Microsoft SQL module, you're into the data. That's what that does. It's not a onboard approved module by the election commission and we found it. It's not it supposed to be there. It's not supposed to be there. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it should not be there. You know, this is like this is the way these machines are designed. 
let's say you your house for instance okay a voting machine is designed where they take the key to your locks and hang it on a, a nail on your front door <laughs> that's the security protocols they have and now let's say within once you get inside there's little robots that walk around and and might shoot you with little rays. Well, the SQL module turns them all off. Oh my God. Wow. I, I, I'm speechless. I'm absolute, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing. This is a nervous laugh because I'm so infuriated right now. That we, this is, yeah. Because this is all the stuff we told, we were told didn't happen, right? This is the fever dream that we all had, that the, the mainstream media told us uh, wasn't possible. You're crazy. You're a conspiracy theorist. You should be disbarred. 157 law school deans come out and say guys like me should be disbarred. We no longer uh, 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 line up with their moral values or their ethical values. The Secretary of State, the Attorney General of Mich Michigan says we should be disbarred. Um, and, and here we are after these months. Listen, this happened in October. It's been happening for years, but the election was in October. And it's now April. It's not even tax day. And we figured this out. Just, just me and Bill and, a, and a, a team of misfit running around the woods, right? Like, uh, you know, I don't know who's Robin Hood or who's Little John, right, Bill? But this is us. <laughs> Imagine if the FBI did their job. Oh, I, I was just talking about that, man. This, this is it, our it, job. Right. It, it, when this all breaks open, which it looks like it's going to, the FBI is going to really look um, worthless. I mean, they already are worthless, but... Everybody's going to say, where were you guys? Why did why did Matt DePrino have to do this? They were too busy knocking on my door. <laughs> and, right. other, and other patriots across the country who did nothing wrong, they're too busy with that. You know, same with, with Hunter Biden's laptop. You know, forget about, forget about the FBI. They are absolutely worthless. Right. They're right. Just, they don't have the word to describe them. Worthless. Right. Yeah, right. and, and you know what? After we put this out today, you know how many law enforcement people or people in the mainstream media have called me today? Zero. I'm not mainstream, sorry. Zero. Zero. What they're doing right now is they're, they're huddling in their offices in Lansing, Michigan right now, trying to figure out how they do damage control. And you're going to see starting tomorrow that the mainstream media in Michigan will satisfy their corporate gods and their corporate masters and put out stories debunking what we've written today. This will start tomorrow. Uh, they've been totally silent today, but they'll come out tomorrow and Monday and debunk it. That'll be the word they use. Um, they're totally controlled uh, by uh, elected officials in the state. People don't know this, but in Michigan, the entire corporate media structure is run through a program called Peer Michigan. If you've been in any other state, you know what Peer Michigan is because you see commercials on your TV. Come to Michigan, travel to Michigan. We love Michigan. Great golf courses, beautiful scenery. It's an advertising campaign, but it's also used in Michigan. Uh, to fund local media, statewide media. If you don't march to their drum, they cut off your funding. It's state-controlled media. It's nothing else. It's the, Our media structure is entirely funded by the government. I How is this the media? What did I tell you earlier? I said the media is now a fourth branch of the government, and they are completely... Uh, they, they have total impunity in anything they want to do because they are completely and totally free of any constitutional obligation. And that's why we're seeing that's why we're seeing uh, news outlets that won't report on things. And folks like me that are sitting here 
I mean, how many people have tried to reach out to you today to say, hey, Matt, this is some explosive stuff. Can you come on my show and talk about it? Like this, you should be, you should be booked nonstop for the next five, six weeks talking about this. I mean, it, it's insane that nobody wants to talk about this. Well, and it's because they're threatened. Think about that. Even Newsmax and outlets like that, every one of them has received a letter from the pizza shops, right? The Domino's pizza shops have sent them a letter and said, if you talk about this, uh, we will sue you. That's not uh, by accident. These letters go out with intent and by design. Uh, and people are scared. They terrify people. And in the state of Michigan, for instance, our secretary of state has gone around the state and told everyone, all the county officials and precincts, if they cooperate with us, um, they may face criminal prosecution. This is the way you stop people from talking. Um, it, it doesn't matter what we're talking about in this country. It doesn't matter what what uh, program the government is dealing with. It can be COVID, for instance. Look at the masses of people who just fell in line when the government told them they couldn't go to work anymore. They couldn't support their family. They had to stay home. They had to hope to get a check from the government down the way, right? right? We had like, what is it, 98% compliance, 99%, probably something, it could be closer to 99.9% .9 compliance for all I know. People just fell in line uh, because they don't, they don't want to be in the limelight. They don't want the government coming after them and they know that the full force of the government will be upon them if they buck the system. We're too complicit these days. Look at this one right here. So that's the reason. That's why even our corporate media structure, even these independent outlets, are terrified these days. This uh, one right here. Uh, Lapo. Jovan was offered, and this just broke today. This is out of his mouth, out of his own mouth. Jovan Pulitzer was offered $10 million not to do the work that he said he's going to do. He said this on David Clement's podcast uh, earlier today or yesterday. Uh, David Clements is a lawyer. I believe he's a lawyer. Um, th th I mean, Jovan Pulitzer knows what he's doing. He wouldn't say something like that if it wasn't true, if he couldn't back that up, that somebody offered him $10 million to stop what he's doing. You guys are so close between you and Jovan and Mike Lindell. You guys are... Thank God. Well, no one is no one has come to us, have they, Bill, to offer us ten million dollars? No. I tell you that, Mark. Um, no, I, I was I was offered the other night by someone. Someone kindly offered uh, that someone would come to my house late at in the evening and extract me uh, from my home. Uh, it wasn't really a friendly offer, I don't think. But those are the types of offers we get. Did, uh, we're not getting man, ten million dollars. Didn't he say he's going to take you on a vacation with JFK or something? Yeah, they did. Remember that? They were going to extract me from my home. These are the types of things I get. So I'm not, I haven't risen to the level yet of Joe Bond, who I like. He's a very nice guy, but, you know, we haven't got the $10 million offer yet. Well, right. you guys need a $10 million offer, but not from, not from somebody telling you to stop doing what you're doing, but somebody to keep you going. So, guys. Go donate at depernolaw.com, and you can also check out that data that we have up there um, on the right-hand side. Matt, I got to ask you about Taiwan, because I, I talked about it earlier. I was trying to push you in that direction. Uh, you, guys, you guys got something going from Taiwan and then bouncing back to Germany? Well, that's what we see on that uh, um, a, 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 a Domino's pizza machine that we, we looked at. Um, actually from a different county, um, when I wrote the brief initially, I was, I had, uh, there was a bit of mi miscommunication between my, the tech guys and me. We, we thought it was out of the Antrim computer. It turned out it was out of a different computer. So we corrected that, but definitely, uh, a tabulator in Michigan, we see a, uh, a Taiwan connection, uh, um, that's then routed through a cloud in Germany. Uh, 
we're not making it up. It's there. It just sits there. Uh, and uh, if it's there, that means there's a, a connection. There's an internet connection on the machine. Um, so they exist. These things exist. And we're starting to see. That's why if everyone in the state just cooperated with us, you, you know, it, it'd be amazing. I mean, that's why I say if the FBI actually did their job, they could figure this thing out in, in, a, in a week and a half. I mean, seriously, they sent 13 people to investigate a garage door pull at NASCAR. And we can't get them to come out and investigate deleted files off an election management system. They turn their head. They don't want to do it. They, we can't get them to come out and investigate massive election fraud across the state. I can't get Michigan senators to talk to me. Matt, it, it, explain explain to the audience, because there's about 1,300 people watching, what these files were that were deleted in Antrim County, so they understand that, it, that it's not a simple thing to do. Yeah, these are system files. I, I challenge anyone right now to go on your computer and, number one, find the system files and then delete them. You can't do it because even if you found them, if you're tech savvy enough to find them, I know there's probably 300 people out there saying, I know exactly where they are. Well, try to delete them. Uh, you'll get an error that says, you know, file in use. Uh, typically, if you need to delete a system file, you have to do it through some type of boot process um, that doesn't load up those files, or you use some other type of program like BleachBit or Kaspersky uh, to get to those files. It's not an easy thing to do. It's not like deleting, uh, you know, a file, a, a, a document right off your desktop, like a PDF or a Word file. That's not, it's not that easy. And people can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't, my understanding after talking to people is not that easy. I don't think you can go in and just delete system files and corrupt your own computer right while you're working on it. You know, you need a program like LeechBit, you know, like, did you wipe your computer with a rag, right? Right. And, and let me just say, I watched Cheryl Guy, the clerk of courts in Antrim County, before this was even a thing. I watched her testify before the, the, the state Senate in Michigan way back in the day, back in December. I promise you, that woman does not know how to delete system files. She couldn't even operate her, her webcam and Zoom and... She, I mean, she was a deer in the headlights. She had somebody off on her side that was coercing her into what to say. She would literally look over and be like. But what that was, what, you're, what you saw back in December, that wasn't testimony before the Michigan House or Michigan Senate. That was a hostage video. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly looked like that. It was. It's like dangling the low fruit like we're going to give you this one because she she needs to be in prison or she she what she did was completely illegal anybody in her official capacity should have known that what she did was illegal deleting you know uh deleting that information she confessed to it in in the in the city council or but not initially remember initially they denied it said they didn't know anything about it i sent them a discovery request asking them who deleted those files and, and they gave me an answer that was not honest. And then at that commissioner board meeting that I linked to um, in our brief, beautifully, by the way, uh, uh, with a beautiful color picture of her sitting there telling Christian Marcus uh, that she deleted him defiantly, telling him, I did that. I, know. I directed my staff to do that. Bill sent me that town council and told me exactly what moment to go to. And I, I was blown away that she and Marcus was like, whoa, 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 wait, did you just admit to breaking the law? I'm, I'm, well, yeah. when you when you know there's going to be no repercussions, no criminal punishment, it's easy to go out and, and go on TV or go on a, 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 a city county commissioner meeting like that and tell everyone what you did. Listen. Hunter Biden has gone on how many shows and sat there and told the, the media host, uh, you know, he 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 wasn't snorting uh, what cocaine. It was cheese. 
Parmesan cheese. I mean, <laughs> oh, smartest man our president knows. That's what he his yeah. own words. Smartest man I know. Yeah, yeah, and those those system files were deleted at 11:04 p.m. Uh, November 4th, and um, no one should have been deleting system files at 11 o'clock at night. And there was no reason, Matt, correct me if I'm wrong, to run the election. There is no need to delete anything from that machine. No, of course not. You don't that you, you you don't delete anything. It's a it's federal law tells you you cannot delete any file uh, or any information about the uh, election for 22 months. Um, so no, you can't do that. She know she should know she can't do that. But what interestingly, what she says in the county commission meeting is, you know, she just wasn't trained good enough. Um, we've heard this over and over again. The Secretary of State had uh, millions of dollars that she received uh, from either the federal government um, or uh, through uh, the Zuckerberg Foundation um, for training of people on uh, these machines. And they didn't spend any money at all training people um, intentionally. Uh, when things go bad, and you don't train people, you can blame them for their errors and negligence. Uh, and then they stand there and say, well, I was never trained, right? Uh, it is a convenient excuse. All right. Uh, so so I have numbers up here uh, for Antrim County. Now, these are Antrim County numbers. And I want to, I, I just want, this is for my own, my own uh, disclosure or closure, I guess. Um, so November 3rd, that's the original count. All right. You had 16,000 votes cast 7,700 for Biden, 4,500 for Trump for a total of 12, 12,000 on November 5th. Now, all of a sudden you have 2000 more votes cast Biden dropped 500 Trump went up 5,000 and for, you had a total votes, total cast votes of 17,000. Now, why didn't we stop there? What, what, what brought on the count on the 21st? Well, I think they still knew that November 5th was wrong. It still didn't make any sense because if you add up the, the Joe Biden number and the Donald Trump number, um, it still doesn't make a lot of sense with the total votes for president. Um, nothing was still working out for them. The paper rolls that came out of the tabulator machines still didn't match up with their uh, um EMS machine, the election management system machine, which reports the data to the state. Pretty much zero. So they still, uh, were, so they still had to fix it. Needed. This was so bad in terms of what happened. Such a colossal mishap on their part um, that even on November 5th, they couldn't fix it. Uh, so they had to go still. They took them another, what, 14 days, 16 days to fix oh, it, to figure it out. You think. Do you think they're just sitting around, you know, for 16 days thinking, hey, we got to get this done sometime? Do you think that's what they were doing? Or do you think they were huddled together for 16 days trying to figure it out? And so then on November 21st, they all take a vacation. So on November 21st, Joe drops another 1,300 votes. Trump actually drops 45 votes, it looks like, 35 votes. And then there's yet another count on the 17th where Joe drops another one vote and Trump drops, it looks like, uh, oh, he gains. Oh, he gains he gains. 11 votes. So now, like, throughout, your, throughout the report, they keep, Antrim County keeps saying, oh, we were only off by 12 votes. No, right? they're off by, like, what, 7,000? I, right, I know, but I'm reading here and they're saying, well, guys, I, 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 there's even a quote from somebody up there that says, you know, diagram one, the hand recount only ch changed 12 votes, but they like nobody ever pays attention to the three recounts before that. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, Brian, I got to I always got to remind people there was no recount of the ballots. This is all off of the um, pizza cutter machine tapes. No one has seen the ballots until December 17th. But prior to that, they certified Antrim County. They certified the election. 
And and now if you look back, Brian, at the uh, graph we have now of Antrim County. Yep, let's go back down to that. Um, you say to yourself, uh, how was Antrim County certified? Um, right? You keep going down. Uh, you look at this and you say, this was what they certified. Okay? They, this is a graph that will really tell you in, in, in just a visual way, uh, how do you certify an election where your voter rolls are 125.5% of the uh, uh, eligible population? And then go down, if, if you would, go down to Wayne County. Okay. Um, it's, it's, it'll be the last uh, slide on the, uh, of the charts. Uh, right there, Wayne County. This is the county where Detroit sits. Okay, this is the county with the uh, white van that uh, doesn't actually exist, is what we're told. Uh, this is the county where 72% of their precincts are unauditable, meaning their paper tapes that spit out of the the, the machines don't match up to the number of people that voted. 72%. This is the county um, where when they did certify it, the Republican who sat on the canvas board came out a day later and said that he was threatened uh, to certify the election and then wanted to retract his certification. And the state said, no, you already said it. You know, <laughs> well, fraud, fraud is fraud. And Fraud nullifies everything. You can't say, oh, yeah, we threatened you, but you, we're not going to let you take back your, your certification. This is this is it. This is right here. This is 0.999 uh, correlation uh, to the votes cast compared to the uh, actual uh, predicted ballots. Uh, and that that's the county. That's right there. That's a visualization uh, of what happened on election night. It's remarkable to me that you can put it all, once you know all that, once you see all that data, once you know about the white van, once you know about the ballots that were printed, where they were printed, where that white van came from, who drove it, where it stopped, uh, what warehouses it went to on its trip across the state from West Michigan to, to Detroit on November 3rd, you can kind of look at this chart and say, that's pretty amazing to me to see that correlation factor um, uh, in Wayne County. Can you back that up for a second, Matt? What do you, no, what I can't you? back that up. No, no, no. I'm, no, I'm saying. Oh, okay. Oh, it's like <laughs> that. That's the first time I heard that. That's all I can tell you, my friend. That's the first time I heard that. Wow. Okay. We're going to leave that one alone. Um, Man, Matt, I know you're exhausted. You told me that you've had like eight hours of sleep in the last three or four days. Um, I know you're looking forward to a weekend of hopefully relaxation, at least until Monday. Um, is, is there anything that, I, that we didn't cover in here? Because this, this was a very long document. I just want to make sure that before, before you know, we, we wrap this up, I want to make sure we got all the, all the squares covered. Yeah, I, you know, I, it's there's so much information, but what's in here is is so damaging, um, and people need to pay attention to this. They really do. Uh, uh, they don't want to. They want to ignore it like like it it doesn't exist. But uh, you know, Bill and I had a mission um, that started uh, um, mid November, uh, and our mission was to say uh, we want to come out um, and and ensure that when people vote again, uh, they will know that their vote is secure and it's actually counted. And this shouldn't be a Republican issue or a Democrat issue, right, Bill? This is a this is a honesty issue. This is an election issue. This is a constitutional issue. That's how we've always seen it. And we set out to prove that there was a problem in Antrim County. Uh, that, that the results didn't match up, and we wanted to get to the bottom of it, figure out what actually happened, and was the election secure or wasn't it? Um, 
you know, give us all your information so we can study it and then figure out whether or not people in Antrim County's vote counted. Um, and, and it's been several months now that we've worked on this tirelessly for, uh, for quite a while. And today we proved it. We proved what we set out to do. Um, and, and I say this, this is the point, frankly, I mean, yes, we have this big hearing on Monday. The Secretary of State is trying to stop us. I, I get that. From a legal perspective, our case has a big day coming up on Monday. Um, a judge has to make a big decision as to what's going to happen uh, in terms of, of the case. Are we going to be allowed to get this data from the state of Michigan or not? In the simplest terms, that's what it is. Can we get the MAC addresses? Can we get the IP addresses? Can we get the names of all the people who had access to the few uh, qualified voter roles? We think there's 32 organizations that access that. Um, and we get access to the other counties and their election management system. Um, we've got uh, probably 50 other items of data that we're asking the, the county for. For instance, something as simple as give us the printed tape that comes out of each tabulator on election night. They don't want to give us that. I mean, this is critical data that helps you understand what happened. So all of that aside, um, Bill and I can say, no matter what happens on Monday, we proved our case. We did it. We, set, we did what we set out to do. We showed now uh, that the election is not secure. It's not secure across the country. Um, uh, and... Really, what should happen is the FBI should come in right now, the Michigan State Police. They should take this over uh, and they should do this is their job. They've got millions of dollars at their disposal and they do nothing. Um, but what this document says, someone asked me to, this today, you know, it's 43 pages. And they're like, I don't want to read that whole thing. It's too complicated. What does it mean? And it's simple. What this document means is Joe Biden isn't president. <laughs> and that is a bold statement, and I love it. I'm not going to lie. I love it. And I have to take this video down because you said that. I, I would have to take it down anyways. And that, you know, that that in itself is terrible. Well, I mean, it's 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 an infringement on our on our republic. Like, think about that. The fact that we have one entity that is going to Take this video down and probably ban me if I leave it up because I'm talking about a court case. I'm talking about something you just submitted to a judge. I'm not talking about conspiracies. I'm not talking about made up stuff, the story that you heard. This is coming. Well, yeah. So our hearing on Monday is going to be live streamed on YouTube. Why? Yep. I'm going to have it up here. I'm well, going to live why are, they gonna, why are they going to let us do that? It's How is that even allowed in our society anymore? And why do we get to do it in this format? I mean, why, why are we allowed to even go to court and argue these things? This should all be shut down. No one should be allowed to talk about this anymore. You know? <laughs> right? right? Hey, man. We don't live in a society where you can talk about ideas. we got to have a little bit of sarcasm, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey man. Um, my understanding is because Antrim County deleted the maintenance log that would show when and where it hooked to the internet and some other things, we need this data from these other counties because we, we can put together what's missing in Antrim County. Oh, absolutely. And that's the argument I made. One argument I make. I make two arguments as to why we're permitted to uh, uh, go into these other eight counties. One is that we need them. Uh, really for data, a baseline assessment, so that we can understand what happened in Antrim County. Uh, that's one argument. The second argument is that legally, uh, when you delete items uh, in a court case, um, we now are permitted uh, what's called a negative inference at trial. And that means whether we have a jury trial or a bench trial, the trier of fact is able to say that because the one side, the defendants in this case, deleted information, that the jury 
the trial of fact there it is. can hold that against uh, the defendant um, and that say, ceramic barrels uh, with one we backyard RC bearing it. Barrel. And we're going to make a negative inference that you deleted it on purpose and that everything Thank you please. deleted was very bad for you. I and we can hold that against you. Shaft. That blows out Robin's the defendant's the entire products. case Top gear. In, this, in our case. Their, their um, uh, Input. argument Shaft. that this was human error gone. Totally up. destroyed based on uh, okay. a negative inference that we're now entitled to. How are you um, most like? And if the judge is going to say, no, we're not going to give you that negative inference, then give us uh, access to all these other counties so we can prove what Ready. was in those other uh, uh, what was in those logs. Uh, but even well, so, these based on what we've seen so far, we're entitled to 100% um, go into these other counties, look at their data, and compare it to what's in Antrim. So we know what actually should be in those files. Um, even if we get a negative inference, we still get to go into those files, into those counties, and look at it. One hundred percent. And that's the argument we get to do it. And, and, and well, man, I like I need an FOIA. You know, I'm new to. You know, you do this for a living, but I'm new to this process. But I always thought when the judge told you that you and your plaintiff or defendant have seven days to hand stuff over to the other side, that you need to hand stuff over to the other side in seven days. Can you, can you tell the audience how many times you've asked for stuff and how many times they have not given us anything? Yeah, we've asked for stuff four times. Um, and uh, the, they are right now. Um, uh, they had information due to us uh, end of February that still hasn't been turned over to us. So we're going on, I think, about 35 or 42 days, somewhere in that area, um, where they failed to disclose information to us. And now they want to go to court on Monday and argue that that none of it means anything uh, because it was just a mistake. Just and, a mistake. And that, and that information that you asked for they have shared with their with, with their people to to build their case, but they're not giving it to us. Exactly. So the, it was clear from their expert report from J. Alex Halderman that they put out about a week and a half ago um, that they actually a week ago uh, that that report they that person who did that report clearly had data that we don't have. Uh, there's no doubt about it. He's, he's looking at information that they haven't turned over to us. But more importantly, he's looking at information they told us is too difficult for them to obtain. Uh, and yet he's got it. He has it. And we, and we know from a Detroit News article okay. that they handed over emails that we had, re we, we had requested. And the Detroit News printed emails that we never received. That's correct. Yeah, we know that absolutely true. Also, and the Secretary of State um, hasn't handed over any of the emails we would expect to get. Like, there's no email between the state of Michigan and Antrim County. Right, not one. Listen to this. This is important. After all that happened in Antrim County in this election, not one single communication between the Secretary of State. In Antrim County. Zero. And not one single communication between the Secretary of State and the Michigan House of Representatives or Senate about what happened in Antrim County. Yeah, it's not believable. So, yeah, so I'd like to say something. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I'd like to say something about, first off, everybody that's gave money to Diperno Law for this case. I mean, it's so appreciated. And, and these, Matt will testify that these uh, donations, five, 10, 20, 50, $100, they, they really add up and we appreciate it all. And at the beginning of this case, there was probably more than enough money to do what we needed to do until the Secretary of State intervened. And then um, uh, as things went on and progressed, um, I think Matt will tell you he spent well over $100,000 in, in getting the some of the most recent data that we continue to get. So we really need donations. This 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 um, fight is is comes from the the financial end of it comes from the grassroots. So we we need all the funds we can get. 
I told um, Brian the other day, Matt, and this really angered me when you told it. Somebody somewhere was putting out a rumor that uh, Matt DiPerno and Bill Bailey are fully funded. They don't need any money. And that was a trick to stop people from, to give up, from giving us donations and try to starve us financially from fighting this fight. But we, we, you know, Matt, I'll let you finish with this, but I mean, we'd really like to raise a million dollars. Am I off on that or is it more or what? Um, well, it's probably more than that. Um, we've spent a lot of money already. We've got lots of bills that are stacked up here. People need to get paid. So um, yeah, the, 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 you know, it's probably a million dollars or more right now that we need to raise. Uh, but it's important. You see from the work we put out, the, the brief today, um, this doesn't happen uh, just by me sitting here uh, in my office uh, alone. Uh, this happens with a team of people, qualified people behind the scenes actually working. Um, you know, we have one attorney working for us, a, 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 a wonderful attorney. She's a mother of uh, three children. Um, one of them a special needs children uh, and she is being attacked viciously by our fascist uh, attorney general uh, because she's involved in this uh, she's being attacked by them they want to take her bar license so she can't feed her children um, and because she's working on this case for everyone um, you know, she called me up the other about a week ago and said, man, I can't pay my health insurance right now. Um, and that's what angers me so much, really, to be honest with you, is the, the lack of funding that we have got from the big donor Republicans. They are non-existent because they don't care about this fight. And you got to ask yourself, why not? Why, why, not? why don't they care? Well, they were too busy getting all the money to put off this deal in the RNC, and then they just rolled over. This, this isn't. We're not Republicans anymore. We're libertarians with a small L. We're constitutionalists. We're constitutional conservatives. The Republican Party itself is is not what it used to be. It is not, or maybe it is what it's been all along. And we're not what we used to be. The populist movement, the wake up. You know, going back to Bill, the 1964 Reagan speech. You know, it's a it's an awakening. And, uh, you know, that's that's a shame. Like you think of all the millions and millions of dollars that those organizations raised leading up to this, you know, to stop the steal and all that. And it's all gone and they're done. They gave up. You know, they they thought they don't realize that this isn't even about 2020 anymore. This is about 2022 and 2024. And ever being able to go and know that we, we can vote and actually have our vote count. But they didn't put any of that money towards actually stopping us. No, they did nothing. They did nothing. They, they put on fundraisers and events and they fattened their own wallets. Yeah. Yeah. So this is grassroots, guys. Donate to these two. Right. Donate to these two. They're still going at it. They're still fighting. And, and I would say that if there's somebody out there thinking about giving us a, a million dollars or 250000 or 500000 and you want to know how your money's going to be used, I can tell you that if you give $20, know that it, 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 it's, it, you know, Matt is thrifty and uh, we stretch every dollar. But somebody that wants to give the money we really need, a big lump sum, you know, feel – sure Matt will say this, feel free to call Matt, go to depernolaw.com, his number's on there, and, and Matt will Matt will talk to you and, and tell you where it's going to go. Yeah, absolutely. Amen, brother. Um, All right. you. So, uh, yeah, but thanks we for having us on. Yeah. And, and, and one other thing, look at those posters behind Bill. Bill wrote a book, right? Yeah, yeah I got to put that up there. Hold yeah, on, hold buy, on. Bill, buy Bill's book. So it's a fun read. It's not about uh, anything we're talking about tonight. It's just a fun uh, novel to read, just an adventure. Yes. Bill, that's his book. I've got my yeah. copy in the background there. Yeah. Just, just real quick, go go to the great ship com. He's got the website. And you can read about the book, my bio. There's some gallery pictures, my wife and animals and stuff. But 
This was a 13 year project. Uh, it's not a two hour read. I mean, I tell people you're gonna go on a journey, but it is a lot of fun and uh, make maybe some sense out of the crazy world we're living in. But uh, I, I, I enjoyed writing it and it, it's, it's glad to see that, you know, um, 13 years of work is actually a book I can hold in my hand and, uh, uh, and I think you'll enjoy it. But um, more importantly, the case, uh, we're so close guys to, to winning and, and saving our country and we can't lose it over money. You, you know, we, we need donors. And if, if you know folks that can step up, we, we would appreciate it. Um, to be honest, at the beginning, you guys were given more money than we could spend. We, if they had the separate, if this would have just been about us against the county, Matt, um, well, you still had to go through getting the, the stuff you're getting now. We just still spent it, I guess. Well, but we wouldn't have. It's interesting when you look back. We wouldn't have discovered all that we did if if she didn't get involved. Right. Remember, she got involved because she wanted to stop our report coming out on December 14th. That was her sole purpose. And, and, and Matt, can you can you actually depose Jocelyn Benson? She'll be on the stand, and you can ask her questions. Being I, she's I, yeah, absolutely. And so she needs to explain how she could ever certify Antrim County, right? Or the or Wayne County, or, or the Wayne state County. of Michigan, right? It was a or why she didn't spend any money training people. It was the cleanest election ever. I know that because Christopher Ray told me so. Or Chris those, correct, correct. Those oh, graphs, those charts that we have, completely disprove that this was the cleanest election in history. Oh, I know. But if you say that, it's still it's baseless claim. So you're sitting here, Matt, giving me actual evidence, giving me statistics, giving me data, and they're just telling us it's baseless claims. You know, here's more baseless claims. Well, why are they baseless? What about the, the six degree polynomial right there is wrong? Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Yeah. I, go ahead. And just one last thing. I, I had to let my dog out about 1.30 this morning. I seen Matt had texted me a question and I answered it because I was up and uh, he answered back in like 30 seconds. And I think he, he was working until maybe four or five this morning on getting this ready. So I know you're beat, Matt, but, you know, God bless you, man. Keep up the good work. No, thanks. We couldn't have done it without you, man. You're the, you were really the, you're the rock behind this that started it all. You're the guy, the <laughs> one guy that stood up in Antrim County. I mean, really, truly. Yeah, um, I'm glad we, I'm glad, I'm telling you, I tell everybody it's divine intervention that Matt ended up being the attorney in this. It wouldn't happen without Matt. Don't let him kid you. Well, it wouldn't have happened without both of you guys, and I am thankful for both of you from the bottom of my heart. You guys are true patriots. Guys, I really hope you guys reach down and, 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 and dig deep and help help their case at the uh, You know, support Bill, buy his book at thegreatshipofknowledge.com. I'm, I'm reading it right now. It's a good read so far. Yeah. Um, you know, I will tell you, this is truly a David versus Goliath story. Yeah. Um, we're up against the, the machine that can use, unfortunately, millions of dollars of our money fighting us. And so you're, you're using your money to fight you. Right. Yeah. Think about right. it. Yeah, it's true. It's true. They're using your taxpayer money to fight against you learning the truth. To fight against how, do we get our, how do we get ourselves into that situation? To fight against your constitutional rights. You know, they're talking about voter intimidation and and equal protection of the law and all that in Arizona right now. And they're completely ignoring the lack of equal protection of the law. If there's a 22 month hold on these, on these ballots for us to, to look at them, if something were to come up, I think you prevent presented more than enough evidence to suggest that perhaps some sort of official investigation should be conducted somewhere in the state of Michigan, somewhere in Arizona, our FBI is sleeping. Our DOJ is sleeping. Everybody's sleeping. You know, they asked yesterday. They asked Hunter Biden, "Do you think? Uh, do you think the the DOJ? Uh, do you think they're going to continue on with the case?" And he said, "Yeah, I, I know they will, and I know they're going to get the right answer." We. I'm just so fed up with this entire thing right now. Well, you're. Right, you're if you want to talk about it, yeah. 
I'm sorry, man. Do you want to talk about intimidation? Temporary setup. I think that's going to work. Oops, I'm, I'm talking over you, Matt, and I don't mean to be. Go ahead, Bill. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. If you want to talk about intimidation, Dana Nessel threatened our legislators. She said if they even questioned this election, she would charge them criminally. A little lower on the other side. How is she not under arrest, Matt? Well, because no one will investigate it. And our our Michigan Republicans who have control of Michigan Senate, Michigan House, they have the power. If they wanted to, they could wake up tomorrow and say, we are going to do exactly what they're doing in Maricopa County. We're going to go into Wayne County and audit it. They could do that. They have the ability, 100% ability to do it. Uh, But they won't. And they won't because they know that they're the people, they're the people who let these machines into the state in 2017. They, they, they passed the appropriation bill Long to before. allow the funding for these machines. They are now terrified that if the truth comes okay. out, that they will have to Got admit set that they made a mistake. Shot. Imagine that. I'm an Having to admit that you made to a mistake. It up and, drop it and, and instead of, up out of, the way of, the, of admitting the thing, that, they go on drop, blind wait a little bit, drop the way it's setting. Still they waiting for that front hinge. They can easily do it. I, I call every one of those Republicans in that. Michigan Senate to do the office. right thing and tomorrow. start an investigation as early as tomorrow to, here in about a week. Um, to Actually, investigate the fraud that we've be. disclosed since no, December 14th next Wednesday, but through today. I this big will be here Saturday or Friday. And if they don't want to do it, Monday. they should wake up tomorrow and resign. Also, right. we'll have other nuts. people step in and coming. do the work. Ooh, they are some people without meat. courage. And they are people without a moral bad. compass. The move, they still they cannot the stand up Illinois, to the dictators and the fascists that we have in the state. Post they are people the without courage and without leadership. And if that's the who they are, there they should resign to us. Amen. 40% of the country April is not 8. confident in what they happened on November 3rd, 2020, and they are doing sense. absolutely nothing to restore any level of confidence in, the, in their constituents, other through. than saying it's all baseless <laughs> claims and you're so conspiracy anyways, theorists. The trucks in Pennsylvania, we covered that. We covered how that could be crucial to hear. We covered the, the, the Germany, the cycle, everything that we've talked about for the last three or four months in, in, in one way or another is relative so to all the stuff I that's still presented in this document. I'm, I'm using just, a I'm out of total loss. Guys, guys thank you so much for being on here. Again, DePernoLaw.com, guys. Go donate to these two gentlemen, Mr. DePerno and Mr. Bailey. Uh, thank you guys all so yeah, much we'll for being on tonight. I really appreciate it, Matt. Go get some sleep. Uh, there, yeah. And then, guys, on Monday, we will be live streaming the hearing. Nice Matt, I did have one right question for you real quick, and I don't know if this is inappropriate or not, but I have been able to kind of help people to reach out to legislatures in Arizona to let them know that they appreciate when they do something good and let them know another way when they do something bad. Now, I know folks are going to reach out to legislatures in Michigan and it's going to do absolutely nothing. It's falling on deaf ears. Is it inappropriate to uh, let judge the judge in this case, I'm not going to say his name, the judge know that we want to see this presented. We want to see this case move forward, uh, you know, based on assuming that they read the brief, based on the brief. Is it is that, I don't know if that's like not allowed or yeah, he should not have any contact or any ex parte communication. So I would not advise, or I would not agree with that. I, I think he's got to make his independent decision. That's why we have judges. They sit independently and they're supposed to work through this and apply the law okay. without outside influence. That, That's what we want from judges. Down As down conservatives, that is what we want for judges. We want them I to take an oath. Um, right, do their work independently an and apply the law. Call it and, right there. And, and too often we see on the left too much um, interference. If you're interested people, in finishing up the static, um, uh, head over to Bitch. Communicating uh, and with judges. Look up so that, that we shouldn't do that. Interview okay. with Matt I Colonel. Know. But guys, in the meantime, we can write Michigan legislators to let them know that we want them 
to stand up for transparency dad, and admit. free and fair elections out there in Michigan. Like, and they should out, be that willingly that giving whatever they ask for to restore button. confidence in the vote in Michigan. You subscribe All right, gentlemen, Al-Qaeda thank you so much for being on tonight. Thanks. God Everybody bless each of you. Stay safe. Later. Uh, Matt, thank you so much.